Donald Duck wasn't always the most lovable cartoon character, and that's a spin we don't see often in entertainment geared to children. He was also a drifter, moving from job to job, much as Carl had done as a young man. Long before the arrival of graphic novels, the Carl Barks stories were deeply felt morality tales, driven by hardship and disappointment, invention and triumph. It was a narrative Carl knew by heart, but the stories were hardly easy. I think that writing the stories was one of the things that made the work easy. I, uh, of course, writing the stories is the hardest part of it. I was more interested in stories that I could write myself than in anybody else's stories, and I could illustrate them so much better. And then one day he retired, at least as an illustrator. Carl took up painting landscapes to pass the time, but he made little money at it. And then one of the fans came by and asked if I would paint the, one of the Disney magazine covers that I had drawn, a little old sailboat with Donald and the kids on it. And I told him, of course I can't do that. That's Disney's copyrighted material. Well, he said, try writing to Disney and see if they'll let you do it. So I wrote to their licensing department and got a letter back saying certainly I could do it, that uh, they would give me permission to paint those pictures of the ducks for one year. But his second career as a duck painter lasted almost six years. He finally gave it up after realizing that he couldn't fill all the orders and that would disappoint his fans. Carl, here is uh, the piece you did, of course, in 1935 which brings us back to the Jeppe Museum tribute. Founder Steve Jeppe was able to persuade dozens of owners of Carl's paintings to lend them to the Diamond International Galleries for a once-in-a-lifetime exhibition. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience for the artist as well. Tonight, what's special is Carl's coming to my hometown. He's coming to my gallery. We were able to transform this gallery into Duckburg, as we called it tonight. And the privilege I had when he came in of being able to take him around personally and let him see his work all united again under one roof and have him look at the stuff and remember distinctly when the last time he saw it, there were paintings he hadn't seen in 20 years. Yeah, I look at those and I can see a little thickness where I covered an area with two or three coats of paint. My compositions were circles within circles. Can you imagine seeing his work captured in oil? He sees it in watercolor. He sees it on the printed page. He sees it in pen and ink. He sees it in the three-dimensional bone china figures. What I would give to be inside his mind as you walk around here and see 50, 60 years of your life. I thought, this blows my mind. This is the greatest collection of Carl Barks works that I've ever seen in my life. In fact, I don't know how they ever got it all together at one spot. To his many fans, Carl Barks was the best in the business. A Rembrandt, they told him at his big celebration. A Picasso, a master. Carl Barks is one of the great pop artists of our time. I think he's far superior to the Andy Warhols and uh, some of the other people that have been uh, uh, celebrated around the world. Uh, he didn't stereotype an era. He didn't do war comics in the 40s that we would probably not relate to today. He was in a little world of his own. Probably is responsible for more of the success of the Walt Disney Company than they will ever be willing to admit. But you wouldn't hear that from the man himself. The shy boy had grown to be a shy and humble man. So all the attention on his special night was a little overwhelming. Thank you all very much. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Carl. Happy birthday to you. Well, it was the longest birthday party that I or possibly anybody else ever had. <laughs> and it was the only time anyone had ever seen Carl Barks toot his own horn. Carl Barks was a gentle man with an enormous talent. But looking around at his life's work, you'd be wrong to assume that his talent was for drawing and painting. No, the good duck artist considered himself a storyteller first. I can look at some of those stories and feel a great pride 
I can look at a painting and realize that there are thousands of people who could paint the same subject better. But those stories are kind of unique. I like some of them.